George Bush and Bill Clinton lay claim to this issue of children's welfare and children's rights. Wade, who's going to do the job? Well, it's not, certainly not Bill Clinton. If you look at Bill Clinton's record in Arkansas, Arkansas is 45th in the country in overall child well-being, 45th. And last year, they were 40th. So not only are they bad, they're getting worse in terms of overall child well-being. His now, record is now, just now, not now, very now, good on this issue. Is that because of a lack of a commitment or the economic position of the state itself? Well, I, I don't know. He's been governor for 10 of the last 12 years. And he's, you know, if anyone's going to show leadership in a state, certainly it's got to be the governor. And so if that child well-being is so poor in Arkansas that somebody who's been governor there for 10 of the last 12 years can't turn it around, I mean, what makes us think he can turn around now, the governor, nation's problems? They don't operate as czars. They operate within the context of legislatures and, and, and economies. What, 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 what do you think that's, uh, that Bush is doing that's, that's so much better? Well, as I've said, we have increased funding for social programs for kids by 66% over the last four years. I think that, that shows extraordinary leadership. But the answer is not all money. Uh, that is not, I mean, we're not spending $100 billion a year on children's programs and support for at-risk kids. You know, before Dr. Vitrell comes in, President Bush went to a very private school. And from there, right on through Yale. So he always had the most money put on him and the most money put on quail. But they say the mass is locked out, but it's not money. They couldn't have had the education they have without, without and, and money. That's exactly why we think the most important reform in education today is to allow low-income families the same opportunity that, that higher-income families have, that is choice in public and schools. That's a joke. <laughs> and that's a joke. What we're proposing, what is being proposed, is we give these children and their families $1,000. Now, you tell me where these kids can go in America for $1,000. What that's, we ought to be doing no. is investing in the public schools in this country. Well, $1,000 no. certainly upgrading, seems to upgrading, have the upgrading, National Education up, up, Association pretty scared. No. That's right. If you give no, what, what we ought to, to be doing, what we ought to be doing is upgrading Mary. the quality of education and all schools, so that every school is a school of choice. We ought to be making sure that when children come to school, that they are ready for school, not just in kindergarten and first grade, but kindergarten through 12th grade. We ought to be making sure that these kids have all the things we've been talking about in this program. And so when we talk about the record, the pot can't call the kettle black. Hot. Because as I look at what has happened over not the last four years, but the last 12 years, the, the status of children in America has gone down, and we ought to be embarrassed. Sh Wait. So, I mean, suppose you accept the premise of choice schools. What about the unchosen children? That's right. No, educational choice goes for everyone. The studies show that even the parents who are at the, with the most disadvantaged children want to be able to choose where their kids go to school. They are the ones who will most be advantaged by that. And the studies I also show that the choice say, programs discriminate against children on the basis of income, that's on the not basis true. of race. Yes, that it is. is not true. I, just, I just finished doing a study on it. No. And I just looked at all the literature and looked at the studies. And the studies show that the selection process screens out children. We don't the have an shows, educational choice system right now. Now, yes, if we, we do have, have it. If we you, had a real what, what do you one, call private and parochial schools? What do you call the magnet schools? The, the situation rich. The situation. Right. What we're saying that's right. is that those poor are, parents and should and have the same screen, ability to have choice and as those the rich do. Those programs we put in procedures which screen our kids that they don't want. But that's and not the kind of choice we're talking about. But we're, talking about empowering, we're talking about empowering people with vouchers the, to allow no, no, any no. parent, let's go any back, parent, let's go back and look at the record. Poor parents have not worked in the past and it's not going to work in the future. You're trying to get around funding no. the public schools. So we'll all be right back with parting shots in a minute. Our national parks are under assault, threatened by overcrowding and crime, mired in bureaucracy. Can anything be done, or is it already too late? From CNN Special Reports, Parks in Peril, Sunday, 9 Eastern on CNN. I just picked up the mail and I noticed my tax refund. Compared to what I'm paying in taxes today, it's nothing. I remember when this used to mean something. I've got to find a way to keep more of what I earn. Common Sense says you should keep as much of what you earn as you can. Well, at least this will pay for my phone bill. And you can earn income that's tax-free with Fidelity Investments, America's largest mutual fund company. I was on my way to my new accountant. He's an all-taxable investment. Yeah, and his tax bracket. I knew I'd pay taxes on my salary, but my investment income? He's not going to like the news. So, what do we got? The good news is, is that we have some great ideas for next year. <laughs> next year? With Fidelity's tax-free funds, you can earn income 100% free from federal taxes, and in many states, free from state taxes as well. Plus, there's no sales charge. Call now for this free booklet. 
a common sense guide to tax-free investing. Call 1-800-328-8500. Fidelity Investments. Common sense. Uncommon results. Here's an opportunity to receive a free copy of William F. Buckley's controversial essay, In Search of Anti-Semitism. I want to share something with you that's very important and especially enjoyable to me. It's Bill Buckley's National Review. When you get National Review, you'll find it's informative, probing, challenging, and very entertaining. It's not on many newsstands, so this may be your only chance to get a trial subscription. For a trial subscription to National Review, call 1-800-257-1257. These hunters are out for the kill, regardless of the consequences. But now, the law is out to get them. Poachers of the Pantanal on National Geographic Explorer. 905 Eastern, Sunday night on PBS. Welcome back. Dr. Horn, are we putting too much emphasis on the government's role? Well, I think that uh, it's important to keep in mind that the Bush administration has been guided in its children's policy by three primary principles. One is that social programs don't raise kids, parents raise kids. That is, th no matter how well designed social programs are, no matter how well trained a social worker is, no matter how wonderful a child care facility is, it is parents that raise children. They are the ones we must invest in. We must give them the resources and then get out of the way so that they can do best for their children. And uh, the second uh, principle is that there is a role for some limited and well-targeted programs, but uh, those programs that are well-targeted to control. help those, those kids most parents in need. Parents have the primary responsibility for their families, but I think we need to face a reality. In this country as other countries have faced up to it a lot of families need help that help must come from the government and it doesn't matter whether it's the local the state or the federal the preference would be a combination but we've got to provide help to those families which need it and we can't blame children because their families can't provide the support Charlene Yost we aren't blaming children. What we're saying is that people need to take the personal responsibility to raise their own children and that's going to in the end be the most effective way to help children Thanks to all of you, Charmaine and Dr. Horn and Dr. Futrell. Government should be a foundation of support mechanisms. Prenatal, Head Start, daycare, health care, education, and equal opportunity. The media must also be more accountable for its unrestricted access to the minds of our children. What access is greater than home, church, and school combined? It's the media. And parents must not abdicate their responsibility. A value system must be began and taught in the home. Like other animals in the natural order, we must nurture and raise the babies that we make. We don't have to birth babies, but when we do, the burden, the responsibility, and the care must originate with the parents. Thanks for hearing both sides. For a transcript of Both Sides with Jesse Jackson, send $4 to Journal Graphics Incorporated. 1535 Grand Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203, or call 303-831-9000.